Mark chapter 12. Background context. Well, we are in the last week of Jesus' earthly ministry before he goes to the cross to die for the sins of humanity. Uh, this would be Tuesday of Holy Week that we're looking at in Mark 12. And it is a time where Jesus is in the city of Jerusalem, mostly in and around the temple. He's being questioned by the religious leaders, the scribes, Pharisees, uh, Sadducees. They're trying to catch him in his words and bring accusation against him. Well, Mark chapter 12 begins with the parable that Jesus gives of the vine dresser or the wicked vine dresser. Uh, this is a stunning indictment on Israel's spiritual leadership. Jesus tells this parable about a, a vineyard owner who plants his vineyard, uh, puts everything in place so that it can be healthy and productive and fruitful. He leaves and he turns it over to tenant farmers who he has hired and he has brought forth to work in his vineyard and to bring forth the fruit and the, the harvest of that fruit. Well, as soon as the vineyard owner leaves, the vine dressers who he has hired now begins to take advantage of the owner. They do not do what he has called them to do. He is, they are not faithful. And so word gets back to the vineyard owner concerning this. So he sends servant after servant, which they beat up, they reject, they have nothing to do with. And then finally, uh, the vineyard owner sends his son. And when the reader hears that, it's like, may not be a great idea uh, because it didn't go well for the servants. Now the son shows up and they end up killing the son. Well, that's an indictment. It's a picture of the gospel where God and Israel is God's vineyard and God has turned it over to the religious leaders to care for them, to love them, to bring them forth in maturity. But they've taken advantage of the goodness of the vineyard owner, God, and they have not done that. And now God has sent his son Christ, who they will ultimately kill. Uh, the the greater context is this idea that the servants that came from the vineyard owner initially were the prophets of the Old Testament. Now the Father has sent the Son, Jesus Christ, and they would end up killing him. Well, this was a stunning indictment, and those who were questioning Jesus realized that he was speaking about them. And listen to this beautiful passage that Jesus quotes out of Psalms 118. He says, The stone which, which the builders rejected has become now the chief cornerstone. This is what the Lord is doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes that God has come to redeem us and to bring forth, and Christ will bring forth the fruit that rightfully belongs to the Lord. Well, as soon as that story is over, uh, they begin to ask Jesus some other questions. They ask him about taxes, and of course this is an interesting question, and it's an important question for us. They ask him, hey, should we pay taxes to Rome? Or should we not? We're, we're, we're not Romans. What would God say about this? And Jesus' answer was brilliant. He says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give to God what belongs to God. When you stop and think about the coin, there was the impression on the coin of Caesar. So when you look down, you saw Caesar's image. And Jesus is saying, well, that belongs to Caesar. Give it back to him. Pay your taxes. Do what you need to do. But there's also this implication here. There's this idea that Jesus is saying, you're imprinted also. You're imprinted with the image of God. You were created by God and you bear his image. Therefore, just as a coin bears the image to Caesar and you should render that to Caesar or give that to Caesar, you bear the image of Almighty God. You should give yourself fully and completely to God. Think about that. Reflect on that a little bit. Then a question came by the Sadducees, and this is an ironic question. They asked Jesus about the resurrection. What's ironic about this is you'll remember the Sadducees do not believe in the resurrection, so they weren't really looking for spiritual insight, truth. They were trying to find Jesus and catch him and trap again. Jesus being the brilliant, uh, brilliant teacher that he was and is, uh, he turns them and he begins to quote to them out of the book of Exodus. Now, this is important. Here's some background information. The Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection uh, because they didn't believe the prophets were inspired. They believed that the first five books of the Bible, the book, Mo books of Moses, the law of uh, God, the Torah, were the actually only truly inspired words of God. And so they felt like uh, the words of the prophet concerning the resurrections were not inspired. So Jesus, again, in his brilliance, goes back to the law, begins to read out of Exodus and teach them out of Exodus, and ultimately tells them, you're wrong on 
this matter. Then Jesus uh, deals with the issue of the great commandment. Now, there are two uh, items that are often referred to concerning Jesus' teaching that were great. First is the great commandment, then there's the great commission here. The great commandment is uh, taught by Jesus, and there he's being asked, hey, what's the most important of all the law? And Jesus says this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and love your neighbor as yourself. And what we see in that is Jesus summarizes the Ten Commandments. Uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart. That is the essence of the first four of the Ten Commandments. And love your neighbor as yourself is the essence of the last six of those Ten Commandments. Then Mark goes on and he notes Psalms 110. Uh, maybe there was some confusion this time uh, in Israel as to how was David's son going to be the Messiah. And Jesus addresses this and ultimately says, I am the Messiah. I am the one whom God has promised from long, long ago. Then Jesus begins to denounce the scribes for their hypocrisy. Uh, it is a very strong uh, rebuke of them. Uh, they were already looking for reason and cause to get rid of them. And Jesus uh, certainly... Uh, gave them even more cause at this point. What we see is Jesus is not afraid of controversy. We see that Jesus is not afraid of the truth. He will speak the truth. Uh, he was not afraid of his destiny. He was not afraid of the path the Father has placed him on, and he recognized that his message and mission was to proclaim truth and to bring light into these dark places and that is still his message and work in our life today is to bring light into any place in our life that may be a little shadowy so allow the lord to speak to you there and then finally it's one of the most endearing stories we have in the gospel it's when jesus in the context of all this teaching and all this high theological discourse and in the light of the hypocrisy that's going on with the religious leaders, Jesus points to a widow who offers her two mites in the offering. This is substantial in so many ways, and I hope you'll take some time and just reflect on it. Uh, Jesus says something that's, that's powerful. He says of her gift, though it was so very, very meager by, by any calculations, just as meager as you can imagine. But Jesus said it wasn't about the percentage it was about the fullness. Jesus says, and she gave all. See, that's the call of the gospel to us, that we are to be faithful in our all, not a portion, not a fragmented part of our life, not a partitioned part, but that we are to bring all we have and we are to lay it down willingly and trust him in his faithfulness. That's really what the story of the wicked vineyard dressers were. They weren't faithful. They were not considerate of God's will. That's what the uh, the, the issue of uh, of paying taxes. It, it's, it's something bigger than just paying taxes. It's about giving myself that bears the image of God to God fully and completely. It's the story about loving God with all of my heart. It's about the story about loving my neighbor as myself. It's about Christ coming as the Messiah and giving Himself fully and completely to us and this story is summarized here and this idea is summarized in Mark chapter 12 with a widow might this this lady who has been marginalized because of her own story her life we don't know her name we don't know all the tragedies that have happened but we see her heart and she is willing to give her all to the Lord so as we reflect on Mark chapter 12 let us reflect on these stories let's see what the Spirit of God says to us don't forget to be writing in your journal take your time and we'll see you for Mark chapter number 13.